Hi, I'm Pete from SKF. Today I'm going to show you how to properly remove and replace a Generation 1 press and bearing and the proper tools you're going to need to do it correctly and safely. Some of the tools you'll need to do the job correctly and safely are a snap ring plier, a caliper, an outside micrometer, telescoping gauges, an assortment of bearing and race drivers, and bearing and race separators. The first thing we need to do on this application is remove the ABS speed sensor. Next, we're going to need to remove the circlip from the steering knuckle. Next, we put the steering knuckle into the shop press and press out the hub. Next, we press the bearing out of the steering knuckle. Now, once you have everything disassembled, a lot of times your inner race is going to be stuck onto the hub. So all you have to do is take your bearing separator, put it on the hub, take it over to the press, and press it out. Now that we have the steering knuckle taken apart, bearing out, hub out, now it's time to inspect and clean. Now the first thing that we go and inspect is the hub. After looking and inspecting at this hub, looking at the condition of it, measuring the shaft for any type of wear, finding that it is wore out, we decided to go ahead and replace it with a brand new one from SKF. Next, we're gonna take a look at the steering knuckle and inspect it real close. We need to inspect the bore in the C-clip groove for any type of wear. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our telescopic gauge, insert it into the bore, center it, lock it, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this four times at different clock positions and in different depths. If one of your measurements are not the same as the, uh, the other three, then you need, you need to replace that knuckle. Many times a technician will use a pick, 90 degree pick, to clean the knuckle in the C-clip groove. This is okay as long as you're pretty careful not to score up the bore of the knuckle. Next we're going to be installing the bearing into the knuckle, but before we do that, we need to find out which direction this bearing goes in. On a lot of applications, these bearings have integrated tone rings on inside these bearings on one side only. So what we do is to find out which side has the ABS tone ring on there is we take a simple paper clip and we take it up against the side of the bearing and you'll notice that tone ring is magnetic so that paper clip's going to stick. Now if we spin it around and we go on the other side you're going to notice the paper clip doesn't stick. Now the side with the tone ring is always going to be facing the ABS speed sensor that is going through that knuckle. So always be careful on which way you're going to be pressing that bearing in. And remember You'll notice when, when we put it in the press that when we press the bearing into the knuckle, we're always pressing the bearing into the knuckle from the outer ring, outer ring only. Now, we're going to go around the press right now and we're pressing the bearing into the knuckle. Now that we have the bearing pressed in, we went ahead and installed the circlip. Now, Always remember, on many, many applications out there, these circlips are, do have a specific clock position on them. So if you look, you look at our, our circlip there, it is, it's at the 12 o'clock position. And the reason why it's at the 12 o'clock position is because of the ABS sensor. When the ABS sensor goes in, it needs to clear the circlip. So it can actually pick up the signal from the magnetic tone ring that's on the back of that bearing. So always remember that. Because if you try to put that ABS sensor in, in with the circlip in the wrong clock, clock position, it's not going to go in. So now we're getting ready to install our hub into the knuckle. And if you notice, I have the knuckle supported on the plate. And what I'm doing on the press here, I have my driver cup on the inner ring of the bearing. Okay. So always support and press through. When you're pressing that hub into the bearing, press from the inner ring only. So finally, we're back to the ABS speed sensor. Now we're going to go ahead and install it. Now that we've R&R'd our Generation 1 press and bearing and hub, now it's time to install it on the vehicle. But once you're done installing it on the vehicle, always remember, if you have a crimped nylon or do not reuse axle nut on that vehicle, you must replace it. And when you replace it, you always, always need to torque that axle nut by OEM specifications. Always remember, when 
choosing a replacement hub for your vehicle, don't compromise safety. Install confidence with SKF hubs, bearings, and seals.